Hello again. This is a scary question that beats up a lot of people, and let me say right up front, we don't test you on anything like this because the math is too hard. But I want to do it anyway to show you what's possible, and if you're pretty confident at math, this will make sense to you, and if you're a little shaky at math, then this will show you what you're, you'll be capable of after a little more practice. So we're going to solve an equation, and it's going to get a little gross, but we will survive. And it's based on mc delta t, so we can you'll follow that part of it at the very least. Just to set the stage here, we are taking 100 grams of cold water, 10 degrees, and we are pouring it together with 50 grams of really hot water. And when you take cold water and warm water and put them together and stir a little bit, they'll mix together and you'll end up with, like, lukewarm water. You'll end up at some in-between temperature. It'll be warmer than 10, for sure. It'll be colder than 90, for sure. But where exactly will it stop is what we're trying to figure out. And MC delta T is going to enable us to find this. The, the cold water is going to absorb some heat from the hot water and warm up. And we can figure out how much energy it gained by doing MC delta T. And the hot water is going to go through something very similar, except it's going to get colder because some energy is being sucked out of it. And, very important, these two energies are the same. It's like if, if there's a story where I go out and spend 16 bucks on nachos and then the nacho vendor makes 16 bucks their 16 and my 16 have to be equal because it's the same money it just got exchanged from me to them so if this amount went down by 16 this amount should be going up by the exact same amount with heat the same thing is happening the heat that the hot water lost is exactly the same as the heat that the cold water soaked up so we know these two amounts have to be equal so if we fill those in, the energy absorbed by the cold water is its mass, 100 grams, times the specific heat of water, 419. The temperature change is the tricky part. We're starting at 10 degrees, and we're going to land at some in-between temperature that I'm just going to call T, or you could call it T final if you wanted. And I don't know what that temperature is. but I'm going to write it as T final minus 10. It's the difference between the temperature where we ended up and the 10 degrees we started at. This is the worst part of the entire thing, so if you're okay with this, you'll be all right. For the hot water, very similar stuff. I can fill out the same formula. Mass, 50 grams this time. Specific heat, it's still water, 419 temperature change, it, it's starting at 90 and it's going down to T final. So I'm going to say 90 minus T final. And this is the point where if you're thinking you should yell at me, you're right, because look what happened here. On the left one here, I did T final minus 10. On the right one, I did 90 minus T final. How come it's first here and last here? That's kind of a fudge. The reason I did this is this in-between temperature is going to be, I don't know, 50 degrees, 40 degrees, 60 degrees, something like that. I'm trying to set this up so that the delta T comes out positive in both cases. Here, T final minus 10 is going to be a positive number. It'll be like 40 minus 10 or 60 minus 10 or something. With this one, I also want it to come out positive, so I'm doing 90 minus 60 or 90 minus 40 or whatever the number is. So I'm setting that up in advance because if you try to do positive number equals negative number and solve the equation, you'll get some very weird math. So this is a way of setting it up that's going to make the math go smoothly. If you don't do this, you'll end up with like a negative value for T final, and it'll be really odd. So this is how we smooth that out. Now, 
I said these two energy amounts have to be equal, and indeed they are, so we can write 100 times 4.19 times t final minus 10 equals, because they're the same amount, 50 times 4.19 times 90 minus t final. And our job is solve for t final. Can we simplify this a little bit? One thing we can do, right off the bat, both sides of this have 4.19 in them, which is a bit of a messy number. We can divide both sides by 4.19, and they cancel out, which is lovely. So now our equation looks like 100 times t final minus 10 equals 50 times 90 minus t final. Um, if I distribute the 100 through here, I get 100 t final minus 1,000. And on the right, I get 50 times 90 is 4,500 minus 50 t final. So, if your last math class wasn't too long ago, you'll remember we want to get all of our variables over to one side of this and all of our plain old numbers to the other side. So if we add 50 t final to each side, or just take this to the left and flip its sign, we get 150 t final. Add 1,000 to each side, and we get 5,500 over here. Let me just make that a little more explicit. We went plus 1,000. on each side, and these canceled, and we went plus 50 TF on each side, and those canceled out, and so we got 150 TF equals 5500. And finally, if you want TF by itself, you don't want it multiplied by 150, you just divide both sides by 150, and you get T final equals 5,500 divided by 150, we get 30, huh, I thought I lowballed it at 40 degrees, but it's even lower, 36.7 degrees Celsius. So the cold water will warm up to 36.7, and the hot water will cool down to 36.7. The system works.